Hi, welcome to Universe View Odyssey channel. Thagorean's model of universe. In the Pythagorean era, the Greeks believed that the Earth was round and flat. So they thought it looked like a disc. They believed that their country was in the center, and that its center was Mount Olympus, the home of the gods, or the holy city of Delphi, famous for its oracle. This disc-like world was thought to be divided in two, traversed from west to east by an ocean. People called that sea the Mediterranean Sea. The eastern sea following it was called the Urkenos Sea, Black Sea. These are the only two seas that the Greeks know of. An ocean called Oceanus flows around the world, flowing from south to north on the western side of the earth and in the opposite direction on the eastern side. The flow is constant, so no ripples occur no matter what storms come. The oceans and all rivers on earth receive their water from there. They thought that the sun and moon rose east of Oceanus at dawn and ran through the air, giving light to gods and men. Of course, the earth was thought to be motionless and still. All stars, except Polaris and others nearby, rise from Oceanus and set into it. There the sun god rides in a winged boat. Then, it will go around the north of the earth and return to the east, i.e. the rising point. As depicted in Greek mythology, the earth is a flat disk at the center of the universe, with the sun and other celestial bodies moving around it. The Pythagoreans used mathematical concepts to devise a scientific model of the universe that was much more advanced than mythology. In particular, it is surprising that a model that could be considered the germ of the heliocentric theory was already proposed at this time. According to the Pythagoreans, the universe was divided into three parts. First, there is Uranus, the world under the moon including the Earth, then Cosmos, the world of the celestial spheres from the moon to the starry sphere, and Olympus, the residence of various gods. They thought that the Earth, the heavenly bodies, and the entire universe were spherical. Because a sphere is the most geometrically perfect of three dimensions. All kinds of celestial bodies in the universe move in the same circular shape. A circle is a perfect geometric figure, and circular motion is a complete and immortal motion, so it was thought that it was proper for a noble and perfect celestial body to move in a circle. The more noble the celestial body, the more slowly such a movement moves. The axiom that the movement of celestial bodies must be constant and circular was passed down to Plato and Aristotle and exerted great power as the governing principle of astronomy until the modern era. Philolaus of the Pythagorean school proposed a model of the universe in which the Earth orbits around the central fire at the center of the universe from west to east once a day. The movement is such that the same side of the Earth always faces the central fire, just as one side of the moon always faces the Earth. He imagined that between the Earth and the central fire there was another celestial body called Antichthon, Counter-Earth. The central fire is not visible from Earth because the Counter-Earth keeps pace with Earth and always obscures the central fire. Philolaus is known to have been the leader of the Pythagorean school, so renowned that Plato visited him to ask for learning. At that time, Philolaus believed that the Earth was one of many planets and that it revolved in a circular orbit. Pythagorean's model of the universe the eighth revolves around a central fire at the center of the universe. This concept of the central fire is different from the solar system revealed today, but if the central fire is replaced with the sun, it becomes a model that is quite close to today's solar system. The hypothesis that the Earth rotates around a central fire is consistent with the heliocentric theory that the Earth revolves around the sun. However, they never dreamed that the Earth rotated, rotated. The Pythagoreans model, in which the Earth rotates around a central fire every day, indicates that all moving celestial bodies in the universe simultaneously rotate around a central fire from west to east. It was imagined that this rotation period would increase for nobler celestial bodies. This is also supported by the fact that the Earth, the lowest celestial body in the universe, rotates around the central fire once a day, the Moon once a month, and the Sun once a year. Planets other than Earth orbit around a central fire, but stars were thought to be stationary and not rotating around a central fire. The Pythagoreans argued that each star exists at a certain distance from the Earth, like the ratio of pitches in a musical scale. However, because stellar parallax, or the change in the apparent position of a star relative to the Earth's orbit, was not observed at the time, the Pythagorean school's original view of the universe had to be modified. It was believed that the lack of stellar parallax was because the Earth's orbit around the central fire was very small. The Pythagoreans did not know that this was because the distance to the stars was very long. Later, 
Pythagorean scholars Hecates and Ekpantos assumed that the Earth was not revolving a central fire, but was at the center of the universe, and that it rotated around its axis once a day. This hypothesis solved the question of why stellar parallax does not appear, and did not harm the basis of the Pythagoreans' model of the universe. This model, which abandoned the Earth's revolution and adopted its rotation, later became the basis for the geocentric theory. Pythagoras and his school had a great influence on later philosophers, especially Plato. Plato inherited many of the theories of the Pythagorean school. Among them are the importance of the soul, the concept of form, the idea, and the importance of mathematics, geometry, associated with the idea. Thanks for watching.